Classic conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. Classic, classic conversations. Classic conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. The rap is gonna be genius. Classic conversations with JT and Low. Classic conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. The rap is gonna go. Hey, yo, what's happening, people? Y'all know what time it is. It is, wow. Yo, you see what time it is, bro? I do. It is 8, I ain't gonna say 8.30ish. It is 8.35. And it is time for classic conversations with JT and Lowe. And that's a cup. Yeah, that is some kind of record, bro. You know, you know that 8 30 is, bro. We're gonna mess around. We're gonna actually be starting at 8 30 soon. How about that? It's gonna man, be 8 36 is just like 8 30 to me. Hey man. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah, beautiful shoot. thing, man. What you talking about? Listen, man. Hey, <laughs> want y'all to be a part of this conversation, man. Telephone number 404 those little buttons to the side you see over there, that like button, love button, the hug button, I think it's a hug or care button, laugh the button, the wow button, you can even get mad at us or cry. It doesn't matter because you hit those buttons, it's going to help our algorithm go up because as I've told you before, Spotify, Amazon Music, and also YouTube, man, we are there. Please just go hit the button. Hit the button just like that. Bam. You know, and I'm already asking for people to hit these buttons on my, on my live on Facebook and I ain't seen a button get hit yet. Black people. Follow instructions. Just hit the button. That's all it is. Just like that. Just, just hit it. Just hit it. But when you go to those streaming services, I need you to hit it twice. I need you to follow. Then I need you to share. That's all I need you to do. We're not asking for no credit cards. We're not going to charge you $5.99 afterwards. It's free, people. Better get in while you can, because we on, we on our way to some places, you heard? Angelo, how was your week, bro? Everything was Gucci, man. Hey, listen, but let me just say something on this follow thing, right? So real quick, if y'all haven't noticed, you know, the last couple of videos we posted, man, we got one of them over 40,000 views. I mean, which is kind of dope. That's deserving applause, Dwayne. Give us applause, man. But listen. He pressed the wrong button. But with these 40,000 views, it's coming a whole lot of comments. Now, there's certain things people are saying that those of us on this panel probably can't respond to because we don't want to kind of, you know, get into a back and forth. But we would show like for some of y'all. <laughs> I would love to see some of y'all yeah. jump in on some of these comments. Man, that would be really, really cool to read some, some good back and forth dialogue. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but anyway, great weekend, man. My man T.K. Kirkland was in the building, man. So, you know, T.K. Kirkland does what T.K. Kirkland does, man. You know, it was a great show all weekend long. But we also had a couple other things, man. We had um, the brunch was crazy. It was really nice. And we had a dude named Tony Armani. Now, I don't know if y'all know Tony Armani, but he's an internet cat who been blowing up the airways just on singing, you know, different songs on the internet, man. It's got a lot of traction. But I'm going to tell you something. You see this dude posted somewhere? Check him out. When I say it was a great show. It was called the Blues and Comedy Tour. We're going to start trying to do it more often here at the club on Sundays at 6. It brought out a real adult crowd, you know, but this brother could blow. And it was a dope show, man. Tony Armani, man, he gave a great show. Hmm. Great show. Uh, great crowd. And then came back with TK to close out the night, man. So really good weekend. I can't complain at all. Real busy. Didn't get a lot of sleep. But I'm okay with that because... <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with I'm that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. No complaints. Ask a cop. I had an outstanding weekend. If it's illegal in Georgia, but if I would have bet and <laughs> taken Colorado, 
<laughs> and placed a hundred dollars, it paid out at eight hundred. Mm. It didn't factor into the parlay if you would have because LSU laid an egg. But the the head up bet paid off if I would have bet. Yeah, it, it was Love paying it. off. Like I said, folks, keep it up, Dion. Three hundred. Cat got twenty four hundred back on his bet. Twenty three hundred or twenty four. I can't remember which one he said. But if it was one to eight hundred, I'm figuring. Three hundred would have got him twenty four hundred back. Yeah, so twenty four hundred. That's what he won. Betting on Neon Dion. Ain't mad at him. Do you believe? <laughs> hey, that's what he said, right? <laughs> I got my receipts, and I ain't gonna cash them today. I'm gonna hold on to them. Yeah, that was a good, but it was a good game, also. That was, a, that was one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This early in the season, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I, I sat there for every play. Me too. Every one of them. Every one of them. All of them. About you, man. How was your week, JT? Man, my weekend was good. I hate I didn't. Didn't have the moment to get up here to rock with TK. I heard him on the radio. He was on the Ryan Cameron show. Mm -hmm. Man, me dying laughing, bro. Talking about his daughter and her meeting guys. And uh. <laughs> eighty percent of the guys you meet gonna be like your dad. <laughs> yeah. So I um, didn't get she up had here. She had her first breakup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. TK said it was real emotional for him yeah. and her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I didn't um, house in the park, something I do every year. Saturday was all college football all day. Um, Sunday, did house in the park. Yesterday, I went to my actual first pool party of the summer, and it was the last day that the pool oh, the was summer. open. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, man, I had a ball out there. Um, it, it, it was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. Um, so it was um, a lot of alcohol, a lot of sunlight. A lot of dancing, a lot of cigars. Yeah, good, great weekend. And college football. You add to that, made it into a great weekend. Great Can't weekend. It, right? Great weekend. So got a special guest up here today, people. Listen, y'all see me out here, you know, smoking my cigars, doing what I do. But I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm actually renting space in the cigar world. Mm -hmm. I'm just renting space in the cigar world. You know, I got my little 12-month lease and I renew it, you know. I just hadn't gotten in far enough yet to where I can actually purchase. But my man that we got up here tonight, let me tell you something. This house is probably already paid for within the cigar world. <laughs> this is Tony Hall, man. This is one of the guys that's got Atlanta Cigar Week started. This is one of the coolest cats. I, I, I ain't going to embarrass him too much, but um, yeah, he, he, he's a dude that has part of a life that I wouldn't mind living. Yeah, he, he's living like that. Tony Hall, how you doing, brother? I'm I'm good, but you don't want this life, bro. You don't want this life. You got to pace yourself. You you you, you married. You settled down. You need to stay over there. <laughs> this this debauchery that that we engage in every week every weekend. We out six nights a week. See, so so now y'all understand why I'm saying this. Part Nieces, of aunties, like we, yeah. yeah. You don't want none of this. See, so you don't want this debauchery dealing with every day. Yeah, I don't want this, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. I deal with a bunch of degenerates. <laughs> And we just out there all the time, constantly. You don't, you don't want that. So yeah, man, I got my man up here because uh, we're going to talk about Atlanta Cigar Week, which is coming up. Uh, Y'all have heard me talk about it year after year. Me and the wife, we are believers in Atlanta Cigar Week. Um, we, we're pretty much ambassadors, but we just don't want to do the work. So <laughs> we're kind of ambassadors on the backside. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, we're going to talk about that a little bit on the next segment, man. Um, but right now, you know, we already talked about Colorado, man. Let's talk about that a little bit, you know. Mm. Um, all those people that was mad at Dion for leaving Jackson mm. State took all them cats with him. All those people saying that he was doing it the wrong way. He's making it into an NFL type <laughs> deal. And all he did was come out and actually on the first game, in the home of the national college runner-up from last year, going in and beating them with his son at quarterback, breaking records the whole way. Well, let me just jump in first to say <laughs> they shouldn't have been in the semifinal game in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I look, look, hey, 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 look, I tried to, look, look, that part, look, look, I was trying to, hey, man, you're taking away from Prime. I'm trying to make right, it, let me, it right, I'm right. trying to make it back from Prime. Yeah. I had to get that out first Cause, 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 because, yeah, because I've, been, week, I've been disgusted, I've been disgusted since last year 
And then to witness mm. that that debacle this weekend, just be like, see what I'm saying, man. But anyway, well, all right, let's go back to Prime. <laughs> Congratulations to Prime, to Coach Prime. Yeah. And because everybody's been kind of questioning him. And and I will even honestly say I questioned him last year from a coaching standpoint because he ran through his conference, the SWAT, but when he ran against the MEAC two years in a row, he took an L. And when he looked at both of those games, he got out coached. Period. In those games, right? But I think just like he teaches his kids, he grew from his losses. Because what he did from a coaching standpoint, and we were talking about this here in the club all weekend long. I told him, guys, I said, you got to take this in perspective. Um, at Jack State, you still had those kids for a couple of years. You got a chance to nurture them guys, especially after the COVID year. You had a whole year, the summer, you know what I mean? Yeah. You go to Colorado, and you literally, they only kept, what, 11 yeah. players from the previous season? Yeah. And only one scholarship player. So that means you took a, a brand 50 new something team. brand new kids and they get like a hundred something they can have on the roster, eighty something, you know. I mean he only had he has like less than eighty kids on the team. So he's well below what allotted. And you got those guys to believe in this short period of time. You know what I mean? You're talking about from the time he got the job to now and the time he brought in all those recruits, you're yeah. talking about three, four months, bro. You're not talking about no significant amount of time with this group of kids. And to do what he did Saturday was beyond impressive to me. Hey, man. From a coaching standpoint, that was beyond impressive to me because you really got them kids to believe. And then you jump into the fact of that boy Travis Hunter. Oh. And then you just the fact of that boy Shadour, who I, I glad when he said, you know, I just came from HBCU last, you know, and they told me what I couldn't do. And I just said, all, I set this record, you know, on the big, you know what I mean? He said, I never threw for this many yards ever. <laughs> he said, and I just left an HBCU. And I just so left HBCU. What does that say? Hey. Oh, Scott. Hey, man. Ooh, I, had goose, I had goosebumps. Shots I had goosebumps fired. after that game, man. Shots fired. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. He throws a beautiful deep ball, man. That. Hey, listen. So think about how, the drops. How many bad balls did he throw the whole game? Dude, if you look at the drops, he threw he Maybe threw two. Yeah, Maybe I, two I, bad I, balls. I, I, the entire game. The entire yep. game. That's what I was going to say. Two, because there was a, he had about three or four drops. Bruh. Travis Hunter dropped two. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that one over the shoulder in the end zone? Oh, oh my. Man. That junk dropped me in the bread basket. I said, God, and that boy do it. Throwing that football, dropped, man. He, Travis dropped the, the other interception. Yeah. He had also. Yeah. Hey, man, 129 plays. That's insane. In a Division I college football insane. game. Insane. Well, but you know the thing. Insane. That, yeah. And he didn't take a playoff. I, I watched him. He went hard every play. The, other coach, the TCU coach said he ran. The TCU coach said he was running the Browns as hard in the fourth quarter as he did in the first quarter. That was the other coach said. That was amazing. Was MJ? Oh yeah. Yeah. And what I got on it's like I was watching the whole process since Jackson State, and I continue to follow it after we talked about it on the show. And what people don't realize is the level of recruiting that he did. Everybody said, "Well, how could he just put it together?" It's not like he was getting struts. He was going out and getting three-star, four-star, five-star players from other teams. And I think he's the one that started it, but it's going to be just like a draft from now on. Because any team, if you need a hole to plug and you got all the pieces but one, you're going to come out. All the things they've really been plugging is quarterbacks. A lot of teams the last couple of years have gone out and get, gotten quarterbacks. But I think Dion, basically with a knee-jerk recruiting effort, did this good. Imagine when he can start like everybody else from scratch. Hands hey, down, I, I, it, it's when a, it, when uh, next year when the playoffs are expanded, I can honestly see Colorado being there because I think his son's gonna stay probably one more year. No, you think he's going out of there? I would love to see him. He's out of there. He's out of there. But hopefully he'll pick up. Hopefully he'll pick up whichever one of the players don't get to play with Alabama. To probably pick up one of them. Travis Hunt only gonna be there one more year because he has to. He be. has to be, yeah. But Shadour, out of there, bro. Stay for what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. You might be at the top of your game right but, now, man. Sure. If he can do this whole year, there's no there's no point of coming back. We're gonna go to break, but going on what you said about coaching, 
He had a small offensive line, and what I love that he did and was he got that ball out of his hands Wait. quick. He had completed. He was like 11 for 14, and it was only 67 yards or something like that because he was dinking and dunking. But what happens is those big guys on the defensive side got a little tired, and that's when he started chunking it down the field. Bro, that, that is offensive but keep brilliance. It, but keep in, remind, keep in mind who, brilliance. who he – Worked under, trained yeah. under last year, mm -hmm. the one and only Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's actually, so if you don't, and that's he had, all he has he, an NIL deal with. Hey, he looked like Tom. It was like that's how Tom Brady won seven seven freaking Super Bowl. <laughs> Scoop, quick, quick, quick. Hey man, great job, prime time. All right, man. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back, man. We're going to get Tony Hall. We're going to put him on the spotlight. We're going to talk about Atlanta Cigar Week. What's this really about? Um, talk about the history of it, you know, talk about his history with cigars and everything. We'll be right back. Classic Conversations with JT and Lope. And that's the cop. Insulted. <laughs> Classic conversations <laughs> with JT and Lowe. And that's the cop. Hey man, we are back. We back. We were still, you know, we still on that prime hangover, man. We loving it. Yep. And I, I saw number one said that, yep, as soon as they lose one game, the haters are gonna come right back out. That's true. Some of the haters are still out. Lee yeah, Corso ain't. probably hiding. Oh, Lee not a hater. I would disappoint the old man. Lee, 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 Lee yeah. Corso hiding somewhere. But um then I saw Somebody yeah, else, right. an old Florida State quarterback, talked about Deion, something. But anyway, we're going to keep it moving, man. Again, want you to be a part of this conversation. If you are a brother or a sister of the Leaf out there checking it out, please give us a telephone call because the man that we're about to talk to, as I've said before, he has a home within this cigar culture, deep in there, to where he don't even have to leave. People come and knock on his door so that he can come to their events. See, I still got to go to people's events and just hope they're going to let me in. You know, even though I have, you know, whatever I need to get in, but, you know, I'm hoping that they'll recognize who my wife is and let me in. Tony Hall. <laughs> <laughs> they don't recognize me. There's a whole bunch of great bearded dudes in the cigar world. Then when they see that light-skinned woman next to me, like, oh, yeah, you Jasper. <laughs> all right, man. What's up, bro? I'm good. How are you? Hey, man, I ain't got no complaints at all because, yeah, actually I do, but I don't know about it. I don't really listen, so I keep them to myself. Come on, man, listen. Yeah, you know, you know. So, yeah, man, you know, I wanted to talk to you about this, this cigar lifestyle and everything, the culture. You know, we've had some conversations, you know, over the years. So, so, so tell me, you know, what, how did you get started in this thing, you know, with cigars and everything? It was a long time ago. Remember the, the bubble gum with the, little, with the little dust in it, the flour in it? <laughs> That's what you started Right there from the candy store, you blow that dust, that was the smoke. That was my start. <laughs> However... <laughs> Uh, about uh, 15, 20 years ago, um, opened up nightclubs in Virginia Beach. Okay. And opened up an attached cigar lounge to it and an attached hookah lounge. Um, but it wasn't really a, a cigar culture there. So my <laughs> cigar lounge ended up being a smoking lounge for cigarette smokers. Mm. So I was only able to enjoy my cigars. I would jump in my car, open my sunroof, and just drive. Put on some music, and I'd drive. I was in Virginia Beach, I'd drive to Richmond, I'd drive to DC. That's a beautiful and thing. And come back, and just kind of gather my thoughts during the drive. You from the area? I'm from Detroit, oh, but okay. I lived there. I was in the military down there. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Right, that makes sense now. You know, you know, you know, you talk hometown, so I just kind of my ears raised up when you say Virginia Beach. <laughs> so your hometown? I'm from Portsmouth. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Listen, so. I will. I got a house still in Hampton. Is that right? I won't set foot in that state unless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I moved here, I'm like I'm done, and I got kids there. That's the part of his life that I don't want any part of. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, listen, I give him a plane ticket and come to Atlanta. I'm not coming back to. What was the name Actually, of the club? What was the name of the club back. in Virginia Beach? Huh? What was the name of the club in Virginia Beach? Aqua Lounge. Aqua Lounge. Had two of them. One in um on Virginia Beach Boulevard. The other one was on General Booth. Okay. 
Our number one fan just asked, you know, we all from the VA, so. And she lived the club life, so I know she'll know it. No, we did. Y'all don't believe that. Number no. one fan. Ain't number one fan just lived the club life down there, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so, so, so what got you, you know, you smoking cigars and everything, enjoying it and everything, but what got you in, you know, into it to the part to where you actually want to make it better for other people? Because that's what you guys are doing right now. All right, so peep this, right? When I was in Virginia and I had my nightclubs, I felt like I was getting dumber every day, mm. dealing with the idiocy of the clientele. No disrespect mm. for them, well, maybe a little bit of disrespect yeah, to them. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but, like, they were just, they, they were very challenging. So when I moved to Atlanta, um, some associates and I got together, opened up a cigar lounge, Habano's, um, ended up opening like a total of three, or, or being involved with a total of three, but the clientele was so different. And I was dealing with idiocy with the nightclubs, three nightclubs. With the cigar lounges, I'm dealing with uh, 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 actors, athletes, CEOs, right. individuals that are doing things and, and, and they're like, hey, listen, we got this going on. If you could bring something to the table, let's get involved. You know, one of my guys is like, yo, yeah, I buy hotels. I'm like, all right, what's, what's, what's good? He said, yo, I need, uh, if, you, if you could bring something to the table, let's get down and buy a hotel. Oh, what do you need? He said, down payment money. He said, I got my, um, my athletes who will put down the down payment. I'll take on the debt. How about you and I just, you got friends, and I pulled together three million to buy a hotel. Deal didn't go through, but to buy a hotel, and we were taking on the debt. But the thing was, I was never in those conversations. Mm in my nightclubs. Right. I saw, they, never, yeah. they, they never happened. Mm -hmm. So as I began to get more and more immersed in the cigar business, you know, um, I'm just interacting with individuals who are about business. And in Atlanta, us blacks getting together and growing together, let's form a team and let's get this money. And see, and that's, I've always said that, well, first off, back then, it wasn't this big boom that is now. And Back the, then, it was certain. It was only certain people that smoked cigars. Being, you yeah. know, um, so you were usually running into those type of people if you was at a cigar lounge. But I've said it many times that the cigar world in the black culture has become the golf course uh -huh. for black folks. There's a lot of business that's done in cigar lounges, a, as you just spoke about just then. You know, we still, you know, like I had a lot of. Are y'all having a golf tournament? Y'all not having a golf tournament this year, right? No, we're okay. doing something with golf, but it's not a little golf tournament. Okay, it's private. I know a lot. A lot of um, you know, cigar weeks. Uh, we get into that in a minute too. But a lot of cigar weeks, they usually do throw in a golf tournament because you know, smoke cigars and everything out on the golf course. But I still feel that there is, a, especially in in those back rooms, because now the front room in cigar lounge is now a, it's a little different, it's a little crowded, it's a little, it's a little loud, you know, so it's kind of hard to discuss business, but I still think that in those back rooms, a lot more of that goes on within the cigar culture. Indeed, yes. So. So real quick, were you, were you into smoking cigars prior to you getting to the business? Or mildly. Or they kind of, huh? Mildly. Mildly, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, once again, I, was, I would take a drive and smoke. I might smoke in my lounge surrounded by uh, cigarette smokers. Yeah. And it just wasn't the same. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't until I moved to Atlanta that I got truly immersed in the culture. Okay. Gotcha. So now, you morph into, right now, the Atlanta Cigar Week, you, Octavia, <laughs> Henry. Hey, man, when I tell you these three are like, Sheiks <laughs> out in the middle of a desert around camels. Man, these folks was in the middle of Roswell Road on a Sunday afternoon stopping traffic and taking pictures in the middle of the street. You got you gotta take the photo. You gotta and, have the photo shoot. And Braves jerseys. <laughs> it was it was a what was it? That was an 80s party that year, right? 90s. Not, that was a 90s party up at Cigar City Club. I looked out, I'm like, why is all these cars stopping? These folks out there. <laughs> They actually stopped traffic to take pictures. <laughs> yeah, but you know, how, 
how did that get started? Because I know that um, Henry and Octavia, they went to school together, right? Went to, they went to school. Uh, they grew they're up both together. from Miami. Um, Henry was, uh, as, he'll, as he'll tell it, you know, he was smoking weed one day and had this idea to do <laughs> what was essentially a cigar bar crawl. Okay. So, you know, he got with a few of us, and um, it morphed that first year into an international event. So we had people coming from four other countries um, converging on Atlanta for Atlanta Cigar Week. It blew our minds. It, like we just we were we were shocked. But from that point, it just continued to grow. And explain to people what Atlanta Cigar Week is, because I, I don't think people get. I mean, we've talked. I've talked to all three of y'all. You know, we have conversations, and I know why you yes. do it the way you do it. But explain to people. You know, how many years has it been now? Uh, this will be year eight. It's been seven years so far. So an eight, this, be eight. this is year eight. And explain how you guys plan it in regards to um, venues, locations, and all that type of stuff. Well, one of, one of the purposes, one of the, one of the things we like to accomplish <coughs> is to show those that, um, that are here in Atlanta and also the number one cigar market in the country, by the way, mm -hmm. um, and then those that are coming in from out of town and out of the country, all the different aspects of cigar smoking in Atlanta. There's so many different variances in, in Atlanta as, as it relates to cigar smoking, whether it's rooftops, whether it's a hole in the wall, whether it's a posh uh, uh, spot, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a traditional lounge or, or shop, rather. There's so many different aspects of cigar smoking, and we like to kind of take them through that journey um, in seven days. So I think this year we're doing um, 16 events in seven days. Four of those are classes. For those are VIP events um, where our VIP guests go and chill and smoke cigars. We got a chef. Uh, we have a liquor sponsor, and everything is free for those VIP guests. And then we have uh, eight nighttime events. One of those is VIP as well, where people enjoy themselves. And they start from a black tie event on Monday. And as the, as the week goes on, the dress code is more relaxed. The first two events, the first one is black tie. Mm -hmm. The second one's at the uh, Four Seasons on the rooftop. Dressy, but not quite black tie. And then from there, it's relaxed. That's well, Friday. Friday? Mm -hmm. Friday's at a new spot uh, called, uh, it's a uh, blackout, all black affair, mm -hmm. at um, Goodfellas yeah. in Cobb. Oh, so you guys are gonna like do a like a pub crawl, but do it with cigar lounges. Well, um, hit the spots and just no, um, and and I say that because we've kind of we've kind of outgrown a lot of the um, cigar shops and lounges. Mm -hmm. The crowd no longer fits, okay. so now we have to go to places that are larger. For example, that particular spot is putting out tents in the parking lot, mm. and they're they're they're. Um, <laughs> Wow. They're blocking off a lot of the parking lot because mm -hmm. we need that space. Um, you know, there are events where we have 1,500 people and we need easily the parking okay. lot okay. for uh, these people. You know, keep in mind, it's not just cigar smokers coming out, by the way. There are people that like the ambiance. They like the, uh, the uh, maturity uh, of the crowd. <laughs> yeah, them too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah them, them too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, the, the first black tie event, that that's 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 real chic. Um, but that joint at the four seasons is crazy, but always the one that does it is she smokes too. She smokes too. There, see and notes is she yeah, smokes too. That. <laughs> so just be, she smokes too is going that you know. Mm -hmm. And usually and I, we had it at one club. I hadn't stood on a couch in 20 some years. The gold room? Yeah. The gold room, yeah. Man, I'm standing on a couch. <laughs> I'm like, I hadn't done this in so long. Because, you know, when you get into cigar smoking, you don't, you don't go to clubs as much. You just go to cigar lounges and stuff. But this was actually in a club that wasn't, it's not made for cigar smoking. But again, it was what I like that they do. They take you to places that you usually wouldn't go to to smoke a cigar. Um, but the dress code, like you said, it, it, it starts there. That, that Four Seasons event is, 
it's it's bananas. Um, what sponsors are you having this year? Um, Liquors Greenwood back in uh, tow this year. Bacardi's our primary sponsor, yeah. not primary, yeah. but yeah. our largest sponsor. But uh, um, to your point, we go places and it's we take over the whole venue, so there are no kids. So it's just us partying like we're twenty five again, <laughs> and the standing on the couch is amazing. Yeah. The standing on the couches, the, the, the whole vibe in the spot is, is, is amazing. Um, so to run down the, the list, uh, the first night is an award show slash casino night. Mm -hmm. Second night is at the Four Seasons on the rooftop. The third night, uh, we have a private event um, sponsored by, uh, VIP event sponsored by Bacardi, but then we're also at the... Uh, is it the Cigar Bar? At Cigar Bar, yes. Yeah, Panola. The third night is when he, I mean, I'm sorry, Thursday is what he mentioned, which is She Smokes too at uh, Sweet Lounge. It's, it's a must attend. Yeah. Uh, Friday would be at uh, Goodfellas in Cobb. Saturday, we have two events as well. Um, that's night events, actually. Uh, at night. Well, Saturday. We have a uh, Burn Lounge during burn the day, lounge, day party. Yeah. Yep. And then we're at Whiskey Mistress at night. That was the first place where we took over the inside and the parking lot, and it was just ridiculous. <laughs> Our anchor event is Sunday, where um, the venue is a new venue. It's a club downtown, around the corner from uh, Magic City. Magic and City, when, when you go into the place, it's, a, it's enclosed by marble walls with a pool and palm trees and cabanas. So once you get in there, it's not like you're in Atlanta anymore. You're in Miami. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's called for the cool in you. Yeah, for the cool in you. For the cool in you. That's dope. Yeah, we like to do different, different things every every year. Yeah, they've done the eighties party, the eighties, nineties, the nineties. You know, where you dressing in your eighties and your nineties gear coming out. You know, so now we get to wear jerseys again and mm -hmm. out in public. Yeah, I want I want every year. Old. This dude, he damn every year I want. <laughs> <laughs> this dude had a a jacket with his whole. Body on the jean, it, it was crazy. It Remember was crazy. when they airbrushed, I left. Yeah, airbrushed yeah. the jean jackets, and put the crystals on them. Yeah, I left. I used to do that. So uh. when the nineties thing came, when the nineties <laughs> thing came up, every year now I, I do. I that. took the picture with him and I said, "I'm done. I'm not even posting this picture." <laughs> like that, Shaming me, man. Shame. I'm not standing next to this guy like this, man. Let me get up out of here. Get that. But yeah, man. Atlanta Cigar Week um, starting next Monday. Not oh yeah, well, today's Tuesday. Starting next Monday. Um, like he just he just ran it down for you. Tickets are still available for some of the events. Yes, um, and some of the events fact, are free. Yes, yeah, some are free. Um, AtlantaCigarWeek.com is where you go get them. Very simple. Glenn asked, "What's your favorite cigar?" Well, I'm a cigar slut, so <laughs> I can't really. I, you know what? I like the Placencia. I like the Malua mm. in particular. I will put Malua as my uh, top cigar, then Placencia. Okay. By the way, Malua isn't even in the States yet. Um, it's, it's about, about to drop. Yeah, I, I wasn't even going to sit up there like I knew what that was. It's about to drop again. When it was in the States, though, it was, it was that cigar. Malua? Malua. Malua. Sound real close to Manua. Coming real soon. <laughs> it, was, it was listed as the best cigar in the world out of Europe. I can't even imagine. What's the cost of one of those puppies? <laughs> it ranges. It's not cheap. <laughs> well, what's, uh, it's not cheap. You say yeah, rough, yeah. roughly. Roughly. It's not cheap. <laughs> yeah. Put, put it this way. Put, put it this way. Placencia. Huh? Placencia. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Pl Placencia I'm, usually I'm, run I'm between what? Smoke, so I used to sell them for fifty. Mm -hmm. um, when the MSRP was uh, thirty-five, but guys would, they would pay fifty for them. Back when it was in the states before. Okay. Yeah, the Placencia that that's at the top of my list, um, and it runs between. 22 to 30 is according to where you're at. Um, like I said, I bought a couple when I was over. In, I, they was just way. Asking about the Lost City. The Lost City? Lost oh, City, so Opus X. Oh. Opus X. It is, it is a uh, popular cigar. Yeah. So, what's the most expensive cigar you guys have smoked? Go around the table. Because people that don't smoke probably want to see and know. So, what's your most expensive one you smoke? I, I know what you're going to say. We talked about it. <laughs> And I was like, I couldn't put five in that thing. Yeah. I don't remember the name of that joker, though. Well, just drop the number. It was some ridiculous amount of money, man. But it wasn't mine. 
<laughs> well, how much was it? I don't even remember. I got to ask Lee because what I tell you, remember what I told you? It was over a hundred dollars. Yeah, it was over a hundred. It was over a hundred dollars, and I was like, man, I one couldn't. Cigar? I couldn't put yeah. five to it. You know what yeah. you can get for the DR for one hundred dollars? Yeah, we, we, we all know. Been there. We, we, we all know. You get a grilled yeah. grilled steak, yeah. Yeah. fish, and a nice get, bottle of wine. You can get three girls for the weekend. <laughs> I don't. I would know. Yeah, I, I think the most expensive. <laughs> favorite was Ashton VSG. <laughs> Ashton, Ashton VSG. Mine, I think the most expensive, and like Angelo said, it wasn't mine. I would say it was about $70. I can't remember the name of it because it wasn't mine. It was passed around. Um, but, yeah, it was about $70. Um, smoked just like the same ones I smoked for $25. Um, and it was damn good to me. So, but, but, you know. How about you, bro? Uh, uh, well, first off, shout out to my guy Rob Smith, who's actually bringing in the Malua cigars into the country. He's got the distribution rights. He gave me a um, a Bohique, one fifty, hundred and fifty dollar Bohique, uh, Bohique uh, Cohiba. It's pretty good. I mean, I like a regular, a seventy five dollar Bohica, but that oh, one the was... Bolivia Cuban. You remember, Glenn? Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Bolivia Cuban. All right, man, so that's this a good is one. about yeah, to go to break. As that's I've said, we're going to talk about it again before we go, but Atlanta Cigar Week, there are still tickets available. Um, some events are free. Some of them have a price tag to it. Um, the 11th through the 17th, VIP tickets are sold out. For some of you out there that like to spend, it is sold out. But I don't know. Reach out to me. I might see if I can get off this lease and see if I can get you a ticket. He know um, people. <laughs> but, yeah, man, Atlanta Cigar Week coming up. We'll be right back. Classic Conversations with JT and Lowe. And that's a cup. 